For more than 300 years, nearly 50% of the people in the southern U.S. were filled with worms. This is that story. What began as something referred to as a ground itch, an itching sensation felt between the toes, turned into a cough that later evolved into exhaustion and a feeling of haze. Southern adults grew so tired that they neglected their farms and fields, and their children grew lazy. There were more physical symptoms, too. Victims had distended bellies, emaciated shoulder blades, and hollowed-out eyes. What was this mystery illness plaguing 40 to 50% of the southern U.S.? It was hookworms. Deemed the germ of laziness, the hookworm lived and fed off of blood of up to 50% of the population from Texas to the Virginias. It was such a persistent problem that it is credited with creating the stereotype of a lazy and moronic southerner. The oddly common and still rather southern centralized hookworm affliction may pose a rather concerning question to how it could have spread. But the answer is that it spread from the ground. Larger cities in the U.S. had centralized waste handling networks, but for much of the U.S.'s southern past and a little bit of the present still, homes functioned on jerry-rigged waste management systems. The most complex consisted of early septic systems to the more rudimentary being pipes leading into fields. Hookworms spread through fecal matter. A healthy adult female hookworm can produce as many as 10,000 eggs per day. Infected individual's waste contains these hookworm eggs, which can mature in the ground and be transmitted through contact with bare skin. This is where the worms make their way to the lungs and begin feeding on the blood of the infected, producing more eggs and spreading further. In fact, an infection of just 100 worms would mean the loss of about a teaspoon of blood per day. But just 25 hookworms in a child or pregnant woman could cause a severe iron deficiency, and in severe cases, hookworms could cause anemia and kill the infected. With southern sanitation, or rather rural sanitation, being so lackluster to the standards of densely populated cities, children who simply played barefoot outside would contract hookworms in just one encounter. Understanding the subpar waste management in the south and how easily hookworms can spread, you can begin to grasp how heavily it would have influenced society. As recently as the 1950s, hookworms could have been considered a pandemic in the southern United States. Eventually, John D. Rockefeller caught wind of the supposed ailment and went on to create the Rockefeller Sanitary Commission for the Eradication of Hookworm Disease, which was a primary agency for solving the hookworm problem in the U.S. The commission set up clinics teaching Southerners how to avoid hookworms and examined populations to find those infected. If infected, they were given Epsom salt and thymol medicine that would treat hookworms if taken correctly, or would kill you if taken incorrectly. The campaign made a large dent in the hookworm ailment of the South, but it lasted only five years and failed to eradicate the parasite completely. It took until the growth of more modern sanitation systems in the 50s through the 80s for hookworm to be considered a smaller ailment. So that's the concerning story of how for 300 years, the Southern US became known as lazy not because they wanted to be, but because nearly half of all of the population had infectious blood-sucking worms living inside of them.